So this is gonna be a re-upload. So I posted this video this past Sunday. It's a collab with Smoky Glow for Glomus, which is very exciting. This is my first YouTube collab. I'd basically uploaded a version of this video to make sure that it was fine in the copyright claim system. It was actually enlisted on my channel for like six days prior to the video going live on Sunday. And then the video, the official video went live, no problem. Uh, and it's now been four days, okay? So this morning I woke up to find that both versions of the video, the unlisted one and the public one, are completely demonetized and blocked in all countries. Two thirds of my video were copyright claimed into copyright claims. The middle section about Christmas with a prince and the end section about a Christmas catch. When I first checked it, they had claimed those whole segments. I was not given an option to dispute those claims. I was only given the option to silence the audio and video uh, claim, okay? But if I did that, then two thirds of my video would be completely unwatchable. But now they've seemed to gone back and just claimed like individual clips from each movie within those within the same two, like they edited it down so that it's like just clips that were like 10.1 seconds, okay? So technically just outside of fair use. It said it was claimed by auxiliary mode, okay? And I'm like, okay, that must be the media company that owns these movies. It must be the distributor, something, okay? Went and checked, no. Auxiliary mode is kind of like collab DRM, basically, where they are just a company that goes and protects uh, your copyright and claims shit for you using the content ID system. But what I think is BS here is that they use the content ID system to claim two thirds of my whole video, which did in fact include segments whole segments of me just talking to the camera, which is not their content, or just me talking over footage of their content in less than 10 second increments, okay? But they did that so that the video would automatically be demonetized and automatically be blocked in all countries. And then they went back and edited it so it was just those small segments that were over 10 seconds. So I'm annoyed, but I'm also petty. So uh, I, just kind of went through this video and cut out all of the footage that they possibly could try to claim and I'm re-uploading that. So you're gonna see some of my editing where I'm talking a little bit choppier because that usually is covered by B-roll because I cut out like gaps of me saying um and things like that. So you're gonna see a little choppier editing in the last two thirds of this video. And I cut down some of the clips that I actually used audio from the movie. So yes, the version you are gonna see is slightly edited from the original version, but the content is still mostly the same because I still want to rip into these movies. Merry Glow Missiles rip into some Christmas rom-coms. That's it, that's my intro. The Mickey Mouse part of my sweater is gonna be out of frame for most of this video, isn't it? Oh well, that's fine. Hi, I'm Amanda, you're watching Soul Entertainment. And this video was actually my first real YouTube collab. A few weeks ago, Smokey Glow reached out to me and asked if I wanted to be a part of Glow Miss with her, so we are both going to be reviewing um, some bad Christmas movies. Um, I'm doing a few here and she's doing a couple on her channel So that video will be up at the same time as this one So I will link that down below because this is a Swell Entertainment and Smoky Glow crossover event um, I had a big plan of like how I was gonna do my makeup for this video too I was gonna do like a full face I had glitter planned out and then today was just not a good mental health day for me And so like a full face of makeup was just not going to happen. So I have like pink eyeshadow on I have no idea if it's gonna show up pink on camera, but just know in person it is shiny and pink and it's the thought that counts. I wasn't sure how I wanted to go about this. Originally, I wasn't sure if I should search worst Christmas movies of all time and just review those, but I decided that for accessibility's sake so that you guys can watch the movies if you want as well, I just searched Christmas on Netflix to see what I could find. Now, originally I like just kind of started clicking these and reading the bios and going from there, uh, but imagine my surprise when I saw that two of these movies starred the same actress Caitlin Lieb. I got so excited. I was like, oh my God, there has to be a third one. And then I can do my whole video about the Caitlin Lieb Christmas cinematic universe, but I only found the two. But it works out because the final movie that I chose is truly horrible. So that's great. For the most part, the movies that I chose aren't terrible, but they are incredibly cheesy and cliche. And um, just the premise are just goofy and frankly dumb and I want to rip into them so I'm going to do so. I will be spoiling all of these movies so keep that in mind but early on spoiler unfortunately there were no surprise I'm um, secretly Santa moments in any of these movies and frankly I think that is a vote against all of them. Christmas with a View, yes starring Caitlin Lee. For the record Caitlin is a good actress I would say and frankly most of the movies that I watched did not have a whole lot of bad acting. Everyone did 
pretty good. Um, some of the lines are just dumb, so I don't expect you to be able to do a lot with it. Clara is our protagonist. Basically, the premise for this movie is that Clara and her friend work at a restaurant in an inn, and then this guy comes to stay at the hotel and work as the head chef in the restaurant and then they fall in love, okay? But this guy, the reason he is a big deal is that he was a celebrity chef on a cooking competition show. But they kind of treat him as if he was one of the main dudes on The Bachelorette and that is why I'm annoyed. How women throw themselves at him and all of this and how they talk about how he played a persona and he played a character and they made me look a certain way, like all this stuff. So him and Clara start working together. The most frustrating scene is that he drives her home after they've basically had a date. They start making out and she just says, I can't believe I'm kissing somebody. <laughs> Frankly, a bad choice. I don't think if you're ever in that situation with someone who is semi-famous or famous at all that you should acknowledge it unless you want to deal with someone with a shitty ego. He pulls back and just kind of like shuts down and is like, I've got a certain amount of attention after the show. I didn't even know you watch it. Kissing a celebrity comment aside, just because she watched the show doesn't mean she's obsessed with you. And also it's like you literally are there because you were on the show. You guys have both talked about the fact that he is good publicity for the restaurant and for the inn. So why would it be so surprising that she knew you were on a show? Like it, it was just dumb in the premise. Anyway, she storms off and um, they're like ignoring each other. And he like makes it up to her and is like, yeah, they painted me as a certain way. He takes his shirt off randomly at one point. And it's like, thank you, but why? They have a full dating montage. And then what ends up happening is there's like a Christmas debacle um, with the boss, Clara's boss, okay, that she was working with on a merger for a different inn, that's a whole thing that I need to talk about in a second. He put her in charge of getting that acquisition because the inn owners were friends of Clara's and they trusted her and so he knew that he could manipulate Clara into getting them to sign on the dotted line. But then surprise, Clara finds out that he doesn't want to keep their inn, no, he wants to turn it into parking lots and condominiums and blah, 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 blah. Okay, so she was being used. Sean is like, hey, I don't trust the boss. When I first took the job here and made a couple of calls and you doesn't exactly have the best reputation so you can sign a big fat deal with him and i can't fair point but they find out the truth because uh clara's friend's fiance clive is a city planner side note are all city planners hot is this something i should be aware of and so she confronts her boss and throws like the diamond necklace back in him or bracelet. I still don't remember what it was. But Sean was at the inn where Clara was supposed to, you know, get them to sign on the dotted line and then they canceled because of Sean. But the whole reason that Sean was at the inn, the whole reason Sean took this job in this no-name mountain town, the whole reason that Sean has been going to this inn to have breakfast with this couple the entire time, I thought they were secretly Santa because like Santa, okay? I thought that was the vibe they were going for, no. I thought it was a secret parent situation. No, basically his parents had died and he had a photo of them where they were putting an ornament on a tree. And so he was trying to find the inn where that photo was taken to feel closer to his parents. That's why he was spending all this time with this couple to try and work up the courage to ask them about his parents. Claire and Sean are not together at this point. They broke up after that fight. And then Sean is with her shares putting this thing on the tree and then is like, I need to give you your Christmas gift. And he gives her a box and you're like, oh, okay, jewelry. No, it's keys. He bought the inn from the couple for Clara to run because they will only sell to Clara. Again, they weren't together at this point. He literally tells her like, I don't, I don't have to be involved. This is an investment. Um, you don't have, if you don't have to have me on as a chef, you don't have to do this, but like, this is for you. I want to do this for you. So again, they had a dating montage. They never show them in bed. They never show them having sex. So new life goal is be so good at making out that a dude that I'm not even dating at the time just buys me an in. Our next movie, Christmas with a Prince, once again, starring Caitlin Lieb. Caitlin and I have decided I am your new manager and we are going to get you uh, better roles and better movies. Caitlin is a pediatrics doctor. She works with her half brother who is a nurse in the same pediatrics wing. Her brother is friends because they all went to boarding school together with the prince of a foreign nation, okay? The prince is visiting their random town in America, okay? and is skiing and breaks his leg. Kind of funny because they don't make him seem like he's in pain whatsoever because like the break just happened. He's about to be helicoptered out of the ski slopes and he's filming an Instagram story being like, hey guys, so I got into a little trouble on the slopes today. Like no indication that he's in pain whatsoever. Like it's kind of funny. For some reason, despite the fact that his leg is broken, I'm wearing socks from like here down or something based on the boot they put him in. They say he's in too unstable of a condition to be 
traveling back home. But they make it seem like he's in a walking boot like immediately within this Christmas montage. I'm gonna call BS, I think you could have shipped him home considering his family was rich and royalty. Also, maybe it's just me, I don't find the prince attractive. I was very confused when they were like talking about how dreamy he is, like, I'm sorry, what? The prince is injured, they don't wanna move him, but they also wanna keep a low profile, so they put him as a patient in the pediatrics wing. Originally, they're like, we're gonna move out all of the kids and uh, he can have the wing by himself. And she's like, no, because these kids are going through treatment. Like you can't, we're not doing that. That's too stressful on these kids. The way they kind of treat the concept of these children going through chemotherapy and going through like intense treatments, considering that it was basically used as a plot device to make her like fall in love with the prince and also make the prince a better person. Like that felt weird to me to watch. Her brother is friends with the prince, okay? They were in the same grade, they went to boarding school together. She was like two grades below them, but she had asked him out when they were at boarding school and he like turned her down very publicly. So she's got like a chip on her shoulder over that. Uh, what about you? Are you still- He's a spoiled royal who trots around the globe only concerned about his own needs. I was gonna say playing mm. soccer. They keep saying that he needs to like grow up and like he has a lot of maturing to do and he's a shitty person, but it's not really demonstrated well. Basically his older brother had passed away, so now he's next in line for the throne and it's just painted very poorly. It's weird. They start falling in love because movie Christmas and children. She blows up at him because uh, he was like out of bed talking with the kids and stuff. And so his assistant and the king freak out like, no, we're supposed to be taking it easy. He can't get hurt. We can't lose another heir. So they try to start moving the kids. She screams at him because you're so spoiled. You're the most spoiled person I've ever met and is told to go home for the day. And it's like, he's clearly like not comfortable with the fact, he's like, what are you doing? Don't make these kids move. Like he, he is telling everyone to stop. This isn't because he's spoiled. This is because the family is terrified of losing another son. Her brother comes and is like, you know, your papers were gonna be terminated, but also all the kids were sent back. He's like, you have to apologize to him because he stopped everything. So she goes and apologizes. And they have like a moment cause he like did nice stuff for the kids and he made a paper crown for himself or something cause the kids were asking about his crown. I completely forgot to mention this when I was filming and it's too funny. I laughed way too hard for me to not include it. They have a whole like healing montage with the prince, AKA Alec. He comes to visit this kid who's about to go into surgery but the kid's mother wasn't originally able to come to the surgery. So he used his helicopter to bring her there so that uh, the kid wouldn't be alone for his surgery. Very sweet. But then the next scene is the funniest thing in the world because he's like, I did something else as well. Actually, you know what? I'm just gonna, I'm gonna let, I'm gonna show you. Genevieve Fisher, a favorite singer. No way. I love your music. And my mom and I listen to it together every day. Genevieve Fisher, I am so sorry. You are very talented. I listen to some of your music, but there was no way. This could have been Harry Styles and I probably still would have done a double take because it feels so awkward shoved in there. I don't know what type of contract you had with them, but oh my God, you got shafted. This was too funny. I couldn't stop laughing. I couldn't take it seriously. I'm so sorry. They have like a moment and they kiss and he invites her to uh, his family's Christmas dinner. But then as she's like leaving, a woman walks up and is like, I'm here to see my fiance. The prince is apparently her fiance. Tasha freaks out and storms off, pretends he hurt his leg again so he can talk to her. She was my brother's fiance. And so yes, my family, her family want us to get married but I, we're not engaged and she knows that. Like we're not actually engaged. I love you. Uh, again, I don't know how long this thing is, but there was no dating montage like in the last movie. So let's assume that it was like two weeks. Makeup, they're together again. He sends her a dress to wear. They go together and then uh, the not fiance is there trying to be a bitch, but you know. He goes to talk to his father to be like, I am here, but I'm ready to take on my duties. I know you're happy about that. And it's like, again, other than him saying like, I'm willing to accept my duties, implying that he wasn't willing to be a prince or be king. Prior to this, there's nothing indicating of really that he was like jet setting around or being a playboy or just being a dick. Like there's not really much of an indication for that. When Tasha's alone, she overhears two girls talking about her. Oh, please. She's an American doctor. The not fiance comes up and it's like, I'm sure they wouldn't. I'm sure they didn't know you were here. And, and she's like, oh, you wouldn't do that, would you? And no, never. I will happily tell it to your face that you don't belong here. And then basically does the dumbest thing of all time. If you can point out 
one person, just one person in this entire party who's like you. This room for a private event that's an elegant event, a very classy, high, high, high end event, okay? Everyone's dolled up, everyone's in makeup and dresses. If you can point someone out who's like you, she's a pediatrician, she's dolled up. If I walked into that room, I wouldn't be able to be like, oh, that's a pediatrician, that's a lawyer. Like, I wouldn't be able to do that. So that question was incredibly dumb. She just got there. She doesn't talk to anyone. How is she supposed to know who anyone is? It's just dumb. So she like leaves and then the king is like, I'm surprised you gave up so easily. What are you doing? Like, my son loves you. Like, I know you love him. I know a gold digger when I can see one. The not fiance is not even an issue. And then she goes back to the prince and stays and it's like, okay, they're, they're together now. Yay. Caitlin, I think you can do better. Anyway, final and arguably the worst Christmas rom-com of this video. Christmas Catch. It's really bad. This is Mackenzie. She is our main character. She's an undercover cop. She's bad at her job. She loves Christmas and that's basically her character. Oh, she's bad at flirting. That's a whole other point as well. Basically the premise of this movie is that Mackenzie is bad at dating. She goes to a singles night, a Christmas themed singles night at her friend's coffee shop. After she leaves the singles night, she goes back to the station to see the tree. As she's going up on a stool to fix the tree, she falls and is caught by some random dude. And they have a very close, awkwardly flirtatious meeting where they talk about serendipity. Running into you tonight was more serendipitous than anything. What did you just say? Serendipity, it means a happy, happy accident. accident. I hate it, I, it's so cringy. But she doesn't question the fact that he, one, this police station is closed. I don't think they do that. Even that premise of him being there to catch her is so sus, okay? How she's not already suspicious of him, I don't know. But then even then it's never explained why he was there and so I'm annoyed. And then the next day an FBI agent shows up to tell the chief who's Mackenzie's mother that she is looking for a guy who was a diamond thief, okay? And him and his ex-wife stole diamonds. The FBI agent needs Mackenzie and her partner to set up surveillance on his house so they can try to find out where the diamond reindeer was stashed because they believe he could possibly have it because they don't know where his ex-wife is and they're not sure if she has it. Surprise, the alleged criminal is the guy who caught her. Yep, he gets her phone number from someone at the singles night at the coffee shop because her friends own the place. Tells the FBI agent, should have told you immediately once I realized it was him, I should have said something because I saw the photo, I should have said something. And the FBI agent is like, no, I want you to go on this date with him. We need to find this reindeer. You're gonna go on this date and you're gonna find out everything you can from him. Her mom gets involved, the partner gets involved, her friends get involved, which I don't think you're able to do that when you're going undercover. It's again, terribly executed because again she's terrible at flirting have the earpiece in and instead of just guiding her through like okay here's what we need we need to ask him about this it's also like here's how you're going to flirt with him at the same time very weird we don't learn enough about his character other than he's probably a nice guy he probably wasn't involved in the theft of that actual reindeer he's involved in theft just not that one there's just not enough learned about him for me to be interested in him or for me to be interested or believe in Mackenzie being interested in him past the physical because that's obviously like we had happy accidents serendipitous you're lying to him the entire time so like what are you doing so they start going on dates a couple awkward dates there's a couple awkward slip-ups she goes to his house for dinner he goes and takes a phone call they're like hey the wiretap isn't working we need to know what he's taking that phone call for it's late at night you need to know what that call is about because again they still don't know that he's not involved and then he comes back in and she's like oh, who is that oh that was my ex what did she want hey how are you happy holidays how's the family your girlfriend's a cop but also it's really dumb that she's just like yes i am a cop this is why we are watching like she tells him everything it's so dumb he like breaks it off they then go and like take all the security from inside his house and he has to sign off on it it's like yeah your girlfriend was a cop and they bugged the fuck out of your house there was cameras everywhere Ugh. so she like looks out her window at one point and sees the uh criminal guy that she had seen when she was with guy whose name i forgot the main guy does not tell her partner who she's literally on the phone with because they're on le administrative leave goes to the lead guy's house and he's just unconscious on the floor. At first I thought he was like bloody, but no, he's just unconscious. Like they, we don't know what's wrong with him. He never gets up off the floor, he like rolls over. She just shakes him and then like stands up and is like, I'm a cop. It's like, you're on administrative leave. So I don't think you have anything that would help with this. And you're also really bad at your job. So I don't know how this is gonna go. And she's like, well, uh, special agent so-and-so, the FBI agent just walked in behind you. That's my partner. 
She's in our FBI agent, that's Bethany. Surprise, the FBI agent, actually the ex-wife. She stashed the diamond reindeer on some of the guy's belongings and then she couldn't find it so she had to find out where it was. So that was why she did this whole dumb convoluted plan. She also talked about how the safe cracker or whatever was like really good at forging documents and how uh, Mackenzie's mother was dumb because all it really took was one phone call from the FBI and then uh, ex-wife was able to have full control of everything. And it's like, I can't disagree, that is dumb. I was thinking of killing the three of you. And then her mom walks in and then a uh, boy toy is just like on the ground still gives her a gift or something. Cause they were, they bonded over like figurines and they were looking for Mrs. Claus cause she's obsessed with Christmas and so is he. And uh, he bought her a Mrs. Claus. No one is actually secretly Santa. No one is actually secretly Mrs. Claus. None of that, um, just a bad, bad, rom-com bad but anyway uh he just overlooks the fact that she was secretly a cop lying to him and spying on him the entire time and they're in love they're together now it's fine that's dumb that's gonna be it thank you again to smoky glow for including me in glow miss um once again guys she is also doing a video on uh christmas movies on her channel again i will link that somewhere but go check that out what are some bad christmas movies that you've seen or what are some good christmas movies that you've seen rom-com or otherwise are there any movies that you think i definitely need to see this holiday season they don't have to be christmas movies just any holiday movies let me know comment down below shout out to my patrons thank you so much for supporting my patreon if you'd also like to support my patreon that'll be linked down below if you'd like to follow me on my social media, that'll be up here. And that's gonna be it. Have a lovely day. Goodbye. I spent all of yesterday watching these Christmas movies and no one was Santa. If you're gonna make a cliche slash bad Christmas rom-com, the least you can do is give me a surprise Santa moment. Thank you, Elaine, Alan, Elise, Brayden, Cameron, Christopher, Chris, Cody, Colton, Crash, PC, Devin, Dirty One, Don, Elliot, Aaron, Essen, Evan, Feckles, Finnegan, Hopeless, Hollow, Jason, Joe, John, M, Jordan, Joseph, Kenny, Kevin, Kim, Kristen, Lex, Lisa, Luis, Manga, Matt, Matthew, S, Me, Lord, the Red, Michael, Michael, J, Nathaniel, Pat, Pralock, Rob, Robert, Ross, Sam, Simon, Stefan, Tasha, Timothy, Tom, Tyrone, Wayne, Wendy, William, Zendry.